Okay, thank you for kind introduction. Also, thank you for uh, kindly inviting me to give uh, an opportunity to talk here. Uh, so since I guess that the audience is from uh, various fields, probably uh, many of you uh, may not be familiar with uh, the topic that I'm presenting today. So I'm planning to keep uh, my talk as general as possible, and I hope that I can um, accomplish my goal. So I just want to introduce just a general story about my research, and the title is a mixed type PDE and a compressible flow. All right. So overall, uh, the goal of my research is to somehow I want I hope that I can uh, at least solve a long-standing open problem in the field of uh, mathematical fluid dynamics. So in particular, I'm interested in constructing or approving the existence of a global weak solutions of all system or all the Poisson system, especially with uh, transonic transitions. So probably you will see a lot of terminologies that uh, you are not familiar with. So I'm going to explain about this in the next slide. And from mathematical point of view, uh, this problem is highly related with studying uh, multi-phase free boundary problems, especially with uh, mixed type nonlinear PDs or their system. And so why do we care about this topic in particular? So in the study of a compressible flow, uh, if the Mach number, whatever this is, is changes from uh, the state where the Mach number is less than one to bigger than one or vice versa, then the governing equation changes uh, the mathematical feature of the equation. Uh, also, especially, uh, also, there is a possibility that this transition can happen discontinuously across the interface of co-dimension one in the space. Then it becomes a free boundary problem uh, in the study. Okay, so there are many difficulties um, you know, uh, facing, I have to say. So before I get into any further details here, there are certain, uh, some essentials um, to know first. So the first of all, I'm going to uh, consider the problem about gas flow. And especially I'm interested in the compressible flow, which means that the density of the fluid is not constant. So for example, many of you are already familiar with the Navier-Stokes equations and also major uh, people in the field of uh, the PDE who study uh, fluid equations, they mainly concern the Navier-Stokes equation for incompressible flow, where the density of the flow is assumed to be constant. So uh, in my case, actually, I'm more interested in the flow with non-constant density, but uh, this particular feature can raise a lot of challenges in mathematical study. And another thing is that I'm going to assume that the flow that I study does not have any viscosity. And because of this inviscid property, uh, actually there can be a discontinuous transition of a flow happens, which means that you may observe a certain interface where the flow variables, uh, basically they become the solution of all the equation or all the plus equation. So they, they can be discontinuous across certain interface. And um, another thing, so mainly the equations that we consider um, is uh, basically derived by conservation of, uh, conservation laws of mass, momentum, and energy. So this is the same as a Navier-Stokes equation. And um, so here I'm so uh, I'm going to uh, present two cases of a transonic transitions. Uh, first case is with the jump transition. And when we consider such a case, there are two possible examples. So there may be sh uh, a shock or there may be a contact discontinuity, also known as a vortex sheet. But today I will be talking about the case where one can observe the shock phenomena in transonic transition. Also, I will be considering the case where this transonic transition happens continuously, so which is uh, about my recent research. Okay, so let me uh, start with the uh, model equations that I study here. So, uh, 
about like more about, about 10 years i have been studying compressible OLA system and uh, which is right over here so let me explain about this equation a little bit so here rho uh, so each of the function in the equation uh, represents uh, is a function of time time variable t and spatial variable x here and um so basically, all these complicated equations are derived from one principal equation uh, whose name is conservation laws. So suppose that a rho represents the density of a certain material, and suppose that you are interested in the time derivative of a total mass of the material in the domain omega. Then you can, of course, uh, compute this uh, the time derivative of the total mass by computing this quantity. So here, this integral quantity represents the total mass of the material in the domain omega, and this is time derivative. Then as long as there is no other external force or effect, like there is no artificial uh, incoming or outflowing of the material, then the, this time derivative of the total mass is a fully determined by the uh, flux, the density flux throughout the boundary of the domain here. And here N represents the outward uninormal vector field of the boundary of the domain. So this is uh, very easy to understand. And then now you just do a little bit of calculus to uh, rewrite this integral equation to differential equation. Then you finally get this fundamental form of a conservation laws. And if you apply this equation, I mean, if you rewrite this equation uh, for particularly conservation of mass, momentum, and energy in the flow motion, then for compressible Euler system, these are the equation you get. Uh, so it's at, if uh, your flow uh, is ionized gas, for example, then uh, it is very well known that when uh, the ion is moving, then it automatically generate the electric field. So one can also consider, so if we consider the flow of ionized gas, then the governing equation somehow must contain this electric field. So this particular system, which we call all the Poisson system, uh, is uh, governing the self, gen uh, the uh, this uh, the flow motion of ionized gas, uh, where this electric field is self-generated by the flow itself. Okay, so now I want to just show you these two model equations because they are a lot sim uh, they are quite similar, right? So this compressible. Uh, so by the way, one more thing. So this first equation is uh, the conservation of a mass. So here rho is the, the physical density of the flow, and u. So this is a vector field. So for example, um, if we consider uh, if we consider the n-dimensional vector field, then u. Be, uh, so here u. So you, sorry. Um, so then um, this U is the vector field. So somehow I'm trying to write something here. It doesn't work. Okay. So here, um, suppose that our dimension of consideration is three, for example. Then of course, this uh, velocity vector field uh, is a three-dimensional vector field, right? So, and then the, the first equation, the scalar equation, and here E represents the energy density, as you can see, and energy density is given by the, uh, this This is a, a kinetic energy density, and there is a potential energy part too. So then, uh, then this uh, represents the conservation of energy, and there is a pressure term. So if you carefully count the number of a function appearing in the system, so if we assume that our spatial domain is three, then obviously we have, uh, there is one, uh, there, there's a uh, row, right? And then there's a PE, there are three, and there's three more from the, uh, the velocity vector field. So there are six unknowns in total, but if you count the number of equations, there are only five, because here, this is the conservation of the momentum, and this is obviously the vector equations. There, there are three, and there are two others, right? So it seems that the equation, um, 
seems to be uh, underdetermined, right? Also, similarly speaking, for compressible Euler system, there is one additional unknown function, which is electric potential. So there is one more equation. So basically, uh, this equation uh, may need a Poisson equation for the electric potential. Uh, is uh, uh, the derived by the Coulomb's, uh, Coulomb's law, which is a very well-known physical law from this electrodynamics in physics. So uh, somehow for both system, it seems that uh, uh, the whole system is um, underdetermined. But actually, there is a hidden constitutive relation to close the system. So that completely determined by the physical property of the flow. So throughout my talk or throughout for my entire research work, I'm focusing on the flow motion of ideal polytropic gas. So for such a flow, what happens is that this internal energy term, which you can consider the potential energy term in the energy density function, is given by your algebraic function of a pressure and density, and here gamma is a constant. And then this basically, this particular formulation is given for ideal polytropic gas, and that makes the energy density function is given as algebraic function of um, uh, this uh, the flow variable, uh, such as the density, pressure, and velocity. So by introducing these constitutive relations, we can finally close the system of all the system and all the Poisson system, okay? All right, so now before I uh, further, uh, before I uh, give a further uh, representation, so there is an important parameter to consider in my talk. So earlier part of my talk, I mentioned the terminology transonic and what determines the physical feature of the flow is this Mach number and the terminology transonic um, is given for the situation where this Mach number changes, of, uh, changes across certain critical number, which is one. Okay, so what is the Mach number here? The definition of a Mach number is a flow speed to the sound speed C, and where for ideal polytropic gas, sound speed is given as this uh, particular formulation. So eventually Mach number is also another algebraic function of a flow variables. And uh, we call uh, the flow with Mach number one is a sonic flow. So this is uh, this is the situation where the flow speed is exactly same as the sound speed. And uh, if the flow, uh, if the Mach number is bigger than one, we say the flow is supersonic. So basically, we are observing the situation where the flow speed is relatively faster compared to the sound speed. And finally, if the Mach number less than one, then we call the flow subsonic. So this is relatively slower flow. So basically, transonic transition means that the flow changes its Mach number from uh, M less than one to M bigger than one or vice versa. And such transition can happen discontinuously or sometimes it can happen continuously. And for both types of transition, there are a lot of technical difficulties that one has to face. Okay, so now uh, let me give you two uh, open problems uh, regarding to these transonic transitions that appears in Euler system. Okay, so the first example, so this is a quite uh, old problem. So now let us look at this particular picture. So imagine that there is a, uh, there is a wedge, so uh, uh, on the half upper, uh, upper half of plane in two dimensional, uh, in two dimensional plane, suppose that there is a, here the triangular obstacle, which is a blocking the flow. And here on the left of the obstacle, and then we assume that there is a, a supersonic flow is a moving toward this obstacle. And one other assumption is that here, now we assume that the flow, uh, the velocity, density, and pressure. So all those flow variables are uniformly constant everywhere. Such a case is called a uniform flow. So we assume that there is a uniform flow with horizontal velocity, okay? And it's a supersonic. 
Now, on the boundary of this obstacle, uh, we, uh, we prescribe so-called sleep boundary conditions. So namely, uh, we, uh, we just force the velocity field uh, to get uh, parallel to the boundary of this obstacle. So in other words, uh, we, uh, we assume that the flow cannot uh, penetrate through the boundary of the obstacle. Then naturally, we can imagine that the flow must turn its direction, right? And when it happens, uh, because of this inviscid property, so at the beginning uh, of my talk, I assume that uh, I'm considering the flow without viscosity. So something violent can happen because there is no viscosity, because viscosity generally smooth out of, uh, has the smoothing effect of the flow. So without the effect of uh, viscosity, something violent can happen in this case. And what happens is that by direct computation, so if we consider a solution of all the system, which is independent of time, so at the moment, let us only focus on the stationary solutions, then by a direct computation at the level of middle school algebra, really, you just solve the quadratic equations. Then one can show that there are two possibilities, and both possibilities contain a shock. Okay, so what is a shock here? So shock is an interface. So as you can see, this uh, appears as a line. So in 2D space, it has co-dimension one. So this is the uh, interface of co-dimension one across which the flow variables, uh, which include the velocity, density, and pressure uh, changes discontinuously. So this is basically a boundary where all this, um, the flow functions become discontinuous. So before this shock, uh, now you have a uniform flow, but after the shock, because since the flow direction must change so that the direction uh, is a parallel to the boundary of the obstacle, then you know, here according to the computation, a shock must happen. Okay. The interesting thing though is that. According to the uh, according to the straightforward computation, we have many possibility that one can consider, and that gives us whole number of open problem which we have to solve. Okay, so um, uh, just uh, simply speaking, so depending on this angle of the obstacle, so here if this angle. Uh, the wedge angle is less than certain critical angle, which we call detachment angle. Then uh, by analyzing this so-called shock polar curve, we do know that there are two possibilities of shock that can be observed in nature. And one is called a weak shock, and the other is called a strong shock. So obviously from the picture, you can see that there is a difference of the angles in the for, uh, between weak shock and strong shocks. Moreover, there is a, a difference in the jump strengths um, of the flow variable across each of the shock. Okay, so across the weak shock, the jump strength is relatively small. So that's why we call this weak shock. And both shocks satisfy entropy conditions. So there is really no a uh, physical way to determine which one is a uh, more uh, physically admissible or which one is more stable. So this is um, um, the open problem for mathematicians as well. So the main question is which one is likely to survive in nature once it happens. And of course, the conjecture is that the weak shock, where the shock strength is relatively weak, is likely to survive better. But up to, the, up to these days, the full proof of the conjecture is not given yet. And uh, another problem here is uh, for the detached shock, where this wedge angle is bigger than this detachment angle, then in that case, we have no idea what's going to happen. So we do know that there must be a shock forming around, but since uh, the shock polar doesn't give you the nice shock as we have here, then we can uh, imagine that the shock must be completely detached from the obstacle, but that is the only thing that we can conject, but nothing more how does it look, how it looks like, such an information is not given at all. So this is an even more difficult problem. 
Okay, so now uh, I gave you the two open problems. And uh, fortunately, uh, in my recent research, um, I was able to give a partial answer for the first question about this conjecture. And then uh, we do know that at least there is a uh, partial result, which is implying uh, that this weak shock is more likely uh, survive in nature in terms of the dynamical stability. And about the detached shock problem, so I was able to construct uh, this uh, this uh, detached shock solution for very uh, special case, especially when uh, this Mach number is sufficiently large. But still, this is a very small result, and uh, we are still struggling to improve our result better than this. And uh, another problem uh, that I want to introduce today, actually, it's my big ambition nowadays, is about this delayed energy flow. Uh, so um, this one, so let me just explain about this picture, which is given from this famous book by Kurang and Friedrich. And we call, so this uh, represent a cross-section area of a certain nozzle as we move from the left to right. And uh, one can just to do certain, uh, one can do the quasi one-dimensional approximation uh, to understand how the pressure of the flow changes depending on the entrance pressure and exit pressure, okay? And uh, if you give a certain pressure at the entrance and another certain pressure at the exit, there is something interesting going on. So what happens is that, uh, suppose, so let's try to follow this particular uh, curve. So at the beginning, the pressure is really large at the maximal level, and then the pressure starts decreasing, and it passes through a certain critical value. And this is where the Mach number becomes one. And when the pressure is decreasing, uh, well, it's uh, equivalent to the situation where the flow speed is increasing. So what happens is that in this case, you start the flow with a subsonic situation, and then the flow starts getting accelerated and it reaches the sonic state. And after the throat, and the flow continues to accelerate and it becomes the supersonic, but due to the pressure high enough at the exit, and then there must be a jump happens from supersonic to subsonic. So what happens is that in this particular branch of the solution for the approximate solution for the one, uh, the Euler system, you see that there is a continuous uh, transonic transition. Also, there is a jump transition, which is a transonic as well. So this is the uh, only uh, physical example, uh, which is uh, found up to these days, uh, in which we see both uh, smooth, tra uh, smooth transonic transition and transonic uh, the the transonic shock uh, transition as well. So here, the main question is: uh, Can we rigorously uh, prove uh, by solving the Euler system to construct a solution with such configuration. And this is an extremely difficult problem. And basically, there is no result unknown so far. And recently, I found a very interesting connection between the Euler system and Euler Poisson system. And somehow, by solving, so by studying the Euler Poisson system in this flat nozzle where there is no change in the cross section area, but due to the existence of electric field, somehow uh, we are able to const so we actually we we have a very particular solution for Euler Poisson system, which shows exactly the same behavior as the solution observed here for the Euler system. And uh, this is um. Uh, so this is um. Uh, the this graph shows that uh, uh, the existence of such a one D solution for the Euler Poisson system. But since I do not have much time, so let me uh, just skip the detail. So here, um, why? So why? So what is my plan? Uh, 
uh, for this particular problem. So of course, our ultimate goal is to solve the this do label nozzle problem. So namely, I want to construct this smooth transonic and transonic shock configuration for the all system in this convergent divergent nozzle. But since there is nothing we can do at the moment at all, so somehow I want to study or I want to construct the multi-dimensional solution for this Olopasson system in this flat nozzle with the configuration of a smooth transonic, which you see here from 1D solution in particular and transonic shock here. So somehow by constructing a solution for Olopasson system, I want to connect this solution to uh, this delayed nozzle flow somehow. So that is just my uh, dare dream uh, these days. So now, um, let me briefly explain then why this problem is difficult to solve and why there are not many results up to uh, uh, these days. Where first of all, uh, like I said, if the Mach number changes uh, between uh, uh, Mach number changes across one in particular, the mathematical feature of the equation uh, uh, or the system or all the Poisson system completely changes. So without much detail. I can just give you this uh, table here. So if the Mach number less than one, so if we are looking at the subsonic flow, then the, basically the main part of the equation from both Euler and Euler Poisson system becomes elliptic. And there is well uh, developed uh, theory for the elliptic PDE, so which is really nice. For Mach number bigger than one, then the Again, the major part of these equations become hyperbolic, then you apply hyperbolic theory. Although uh, for multi-D case, uh, especially for nonlinear hyperbolic PD, well, it is not that easy to deal compared to the elliptic case, but at least there is certain general theory which one can apply. But the problem is that for this type of, a pro uh, for these examples is that in one domain, the Mach number changes uh, from being less than one to being bigger than one uh, somewhere. So somehow the mathematically our equation changes its feature from being elliptic to hyperbolic or vice versa. And what um, what's even more difficult is that we just don't know where this transition happens. Okay, so which means that we don't know what type of mathematical theory to apply this problem. And then the worst case is when the Mach number becomes one, and that happens if we consider this sonic boundary uh, for this Euler Poisson system or the delayed nozzle flow. Okay, then all the theory just, uh, just doesn't work anymore. And for this degenerate case, basically nothing is known. All right, so there are many other uh, problems. So for example, if uh, we consider this transonic transition across a shock, then one has to deal with the free boundary problem. For the case of all the system, there are some results uh, uh, to tell you how to handle this uh, uh, the shock as a free boundary. So we do have certain results. But for the all the Poisson system case, because of this Poisson equation for the electric potential, which is a comp completely non-local, and that equation uh, exists both in supersonic and subsonic area. Because of that, now uh, when you consider a shock problem in all the Poisson system, then uh, actually both supersonic and subsonic sites are unknown. So this is a two-phase free boundary problem, where on the other hand, uh, for the all the system case, supersonic site, you first solve this as uh, you first solve the system. Uh, because it's hyperbolic, then you bring this information to determine the location of a shock and the state behind it. So this is like one phase of free boundary problem. So somehow for all of Poisson system, the shock problem is uh, much more difficult. And I've never seen any research on, uh, on dealing with this type of a two phase free boundary problem with the mixed type PDE. Okay, and also um, there is many other difficulties that you know one can uh, continue to discuss. But I noticed that uh, actually my time is almost up. Um, 
So here, just to just to tell you quickly, now when you deal with the sonic boundary, like I said earlier, all these standard PD theory, such as elliptic theory or hyperbolic theory, just immediately fail. And basically, there is no general theory to uh, apply. So that is the biggest problem here. Uh, so then, well, you know, but there are some special cases that one can, you know, somehow handle and get certain result. So I uh, just I bring some number of cases, but maybe uh, here I will just skip. So then uh, uh, finally, now uh, let me um, so uh, give you the recent results that I have uh, to share or uh, here today with you. So about this Prater's conjecture, uh, where um, we consider uh, between weak shock and strong shock, which one is dynamically stable. And we claim that the weak shock is stable. And for the potential flow case, we are, we were able to prove it globally. And then, um, so here, there the, we do have one paper, which is uh, probably being published this year. Uh, so then, um, so this particular configuration is the solution that we constructed. So there are many structures um, uh, that one can see. And then the interesting thing is that in this case, we do have a shock. Also, we do have a sonic boundary. So these are the examples where you do see this complicated transonic transition, both continuous, either continuous or discontinuous here. And um, also for this uh, for this smooth transonic uh, transition for the Euler Poisson system in flat nodule. Now I also have uh, the result. Then the actually the paper is coming very soon. So now I'm at the final stage of um, actually making the corrections. So um, that's all I prepare. And thank you for your uh, attention.